when sodium and glucose fell in love with each other in the proximal tubule of nephrons, sodium started helping the glucose and started transporting glucose from proximal tubule in the blood through ride sharing. But after a certain limit, sodium can no longer offer the ride sharing to glucose because of limitation of the ride. And that limit, that limit after which sodium cannot offer ride sharing or the limit after which so glucose cannot be reabsorbed from proximal tubule into the blood is known as transport maximum. This love story of sodium and glucose begin when urine formation by the kidneys started. The first step in urine formation in the kidneys is filtration. Blood in the kidneys is filtered and filtrated from the glomerular capillaries enter into the proximal tubule. Now, from the proximal tubule, certain solutes have to go back into the blood and some of the solutes have to be excreted in urine. This process is known as tubular reabsorption. Some of the solutes like sodium are powerful, rich and have the ride. They can travel back from proximal tubule into the blood. But some solutes are poor and powerless like glucose. They cannot on themselves trans go from proximal tubule into the blood. So they start taking help of sodium through ride sharing. Now sodium is good. Sodium will uh, provide ride sharing, ride sharing and will help the glucose to uh, go from proximal tubule into the blood. But within certain limits. When the limit is crossed, sodium will stop helping. And that limit is known as transport maximum. So the topic to discuss today is transport maximum. How it occurs and what is transport maximum. Now to discuss this and understand this topic, we will need to we will need to understand this graph in which we have shown certain curves. In this graph, we have plotted the plasma glucose concentration on y-axis and glucose filtered load reabsorption or excretion on y-axis. Three components are being represented on the y-axis and glucose plasma glucose concentration is being represented or plotted on the x-axis. Initially, when the plasma glucose concentration is normal, plasma normal glucose concentration is around 100. In, at the normal level, the filtered load of glucose is 125. At 100 plasma glucose, the filtered load or the amount of glucose that has been filtered from blood into the proximal tubule is 125. When the plasma concentration of glucose increases to 200, the filtered load or the tubular load of glucose increases to 200. So at 100, the filtered load of glucose in the proximal tubule is 125. At plasma concentration of glucose at 200, the filtered load is 250. Now the glucose in the proximal tubule will reabsorb. It will be reabsorbed from proximal tubule into the blood till the limit of 375 milligram per minute. When this limit is reached, when this level is reached, then the remaining glucose cannot be uh, reabsorbed from the proximal tubule into the blood because the ride sharing of the sodium has certain limitation. Although sodium is good and is trying to help, but there are certain limits. So you see, initially, initially when the plasma concentration was increasing, the reabsorption was also increasing. This red color curve is showing reabsorption of glucose. So when the plasma concentration was increasing, the reabsorption, sorry, this red color curve is showing the filtered load. When the plasma concentration was increasing, this filtered load, the amount of glucose entering the tubule was also increasing. When the amount of glucose entering the tubule was increasing, the reabsorption was also increasing. Now this blue color curve is showing the reabsorption. So when the filtered load is increasing, the reabsorption is also increasing, but within certain limits. Now, when 375 milligram of load is achieved in the proximal tubule, after that point, no reabsorption will occur. And that point is known as transport maximum for glucose. Now, transport maximum is different for glucose, different for proteins, different for urates, and different for lactate, sulfate, each, each and everything. Uh, transport maximum is different for each and everything. Initially, when the plasma glucose concentration was increasing, there was no urine, no glucose coming in urine. There was no glucose coming in the urine. But when the plasma glucose concentration reaches 200 milligram per 100 ml, glucose start appearing in the urine. And with increasing concentration, the amount of glucose appearing in urine or getting excreted in urine is increasing. So basically, the threshold, the, the threshold for the tubular load is 375 the threshold, uh, sorry, the, the, the transport maximum for glucose is 375 milligram per minute. The transport maximum is 375 milligram per minute. But the threshold, the point at which glucose starts appearing in urine is around 200 milligram per 100 ml. At this threshold level, glucose starts appearing in urine. It is because, it is because that all nephrons in the kidneys have not the same transport maximum. Some nephrons will start excreting the glucose even before the 375 limit. Some, some nephron will be absorbing even beyond this limit, but most of the nephron, almost 99% of the nephrons will not absorb glucose if the filtered load is more than 375 milligram per minute. If the amount of glucose, if the amount of glucose that is filtered per minute is more than 375 milligram. Now, 
the, this filtered load of 375 milligram per minute is achieved when the plasma glucose concentration is somewhere between 200 and 300. When the plasma glucose concentration is somewhere between 200 and 300, the filtered load is of 375 is achieved. So till the point of 375 milligram per minute, all the glucose that is filtered is reabsorbed. But beyond this point, glucose is not reabsorbed and it starts appearing in the urine. So it is because it is because the carrier proteins, the carrier proteins which are helping sodium and glucose to get reabsorbed in the proximal tubule. These cells are basically cells of the proximal tubule. And here we have the carrier proteins. These carrier proteins help in the reabsorption of sodium and glucose through a mechanism which is basically the active transport, the primary active transport for sodium and secondary active transport for the glucose. Now these things we have discussed in detail in previous lectures. When all the carrier proteins, when all the carrier proteins, the rides of the sodium and glucose are occupied, then there is no remaining carrier protein to help reabsorb glucose from proximal tubule into the blood. So the remaining glucose starts appearing in urine. Now when the plasma glucose concentration, when the plasma glucose concentration reaches around 200, the glucose starts appearing in the urine. But when the filtered load, when the filtered load has crossed 375 milligram per minute, then after that level, all of the remaining glucose will be appearing in urine and that point is known as the transport maximum for glucose. Similarly, there is a transport maximum for proteins and transport uh, maximum for urine. And transport maximum simply means a limit at which all the carrier proteins which reabsorb that solute are fully occupied and those carrier proteins can no further reabsorb and the remaining solute will appear in urine or will be get excreted in urine. And that's all about the transport maximum, especially the transport maximum of glucose. Thanks a lot for watching the video.